Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brent, and welcome to Spectrum Today. Looking forward to a great time with you. Ruth, we're going to kick this week off by talking with Dennis Cole about the concept of revival. He's with Dramatic Christian Ministries right here in Albuquerque. And then we're going to move into the topic of education with Mike Derrick awesome. from one of our local Christian schools, Evangel Christian Academy. Which those topics are very important. Revival is very important and also your children's education. So you're not going to want to miss a minute. We'll be right back. privilege to have with us today, back with us in fact, Dennis Cole. Dennis is a gentleman that many of you know. Maybe he's visited your church. He's with Dramatic Christian Ministries. We welcome you back, Dennis. Thanks for coming by. Dennis. Thank you. Privilege. I like that. Well, it's, it is. It, it really is a privilege for us to have you come and to share with us. You know, your ministry is unique in the fact that it deals with dramas, but not only that, it does so many other things. I, let's just kind of start, uh, if we could, and say what's significant, what's new and what you are doing in the last year. Give us an update. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, a lot of metamorphosis is happening. Metamorphosis, by the way, is, uh, you know, where the caterpillar becomes the butterfly. Right. But I always think of the, the butterfly in the air remembering he was a caterpillar. So I've never thought of that, but I guess they would think that. <laughs> well, humanly speaking, you know, wow. And I think that in, in the kingdom, kingdom of God thinking that uh, metamorphosis is the way to change so you can stay the same. Huh. There's an essence, I always say to people, if you look like your baby pictures, that's a really good sign as you get older. So The older we get, the more we want to look like our baby well, pictures. Well, that, that, <laughs> and some people, Pastor Brenton, I'm telling you, I have a feeling that you might look like your baby pictures. I have to look at them. All right, all right. Because I, <laughs> there's an essence that, that is precious and, but change is necessary to get to the essence. It's interesting. I was talking to a, another pastor uh, who had pastored in yes. southern New Mexico, a, a, one, a great church, one of the greatest churches yeah. in New Mexico, so large, grew under his ministry. But he'd been there for, I, I don't remember, 25, 30 years, a long time. And he said, you know, one of the challenges of staying uh, in a church is that you have to keep changing. Uh, you know, you, you know, as a pastor, you can't just be the same guy that showed up 30 years ago wearing the same suit and preaching the same sermon and doing the same old, same old. You're going to have to continue changing. And, and that's really true for each of us as Christians. We've got to adapt, don't we? We, we have to continue moving. So COVID was a huge event that, that really turned a lot of things on its head. We're still experiencing that with all of the financial uh, trauma, which mm -hmm. our world is now beginning to really feel. Hmm. What are some of the metamorphoses, the changes that you have seen as you have been ministering to different people? Well, I, for instance, um, my wife Wendy and I just had this heart to get people together. I mean, it was, you know, the, the, the churches were closed and nobody was, this is like two, three years ago. And, and we just started a meeting. Uh, we call it the Acts meeting. Uh, we do it every other Friday. Uh, the next meeting is January is June third, by the way. If you want to look at the number there, sure, great. But uh, I'll give you information uh, when you call me. But it's based on Acts two forty two. It's based on this interactive reality of apostles teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, which is communion, and prayer. And then uh, three times between Acts two forty two and forty seven, it says they they got together, they ate together together. So we have a meal together. Okay. So do you and have it at a restaurant? Do you have no, it at we have, a, we have, have it at, at a church. We have it at 11435, uh, the old um, Holiday Park Nazarene Church, which closed recently. Up on Montgomery? Yeah, Montgomery. I know, I know where that is. Tramway. Kind of looks like a ski jump. It, and it's got that cross. Oh, it's so <laughs> spiritual. It really is cool. Yeah. It's very cool inside. I like it. And uh, we all do. But uh, in, in the Nazarenes uh, ran out the space to different different church movements. I guess we're one of them. We're not planting a church. I just want to do revival meetings. I want to do renewal meetings. And I'm finding that 
And I was involved in the Toronto Blessing uh, back in the 90s when the Vineyard Music Group was really warm. And people from all over the world were coming to the vineyard at the airport uh, in Toronto, airport vineyard, Toronto airport vineyard, and uh, all over the world. And that's the first vineyard I ever went to was Toronto. And worship was the thing. Worship and bringing people into intimacy with God. Now, to find renewal today with all the uh, guarded stuff and isolation, it's, Satan loves isolation. Because you know, nine, the us. 90s were a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, I don't imagine many, some of you watching today, you think of the 90s and you think of that, that stuff you read about in your history books. Seriously. Because, yeah. you know, we're talking three, th three decades ago. Yeah, it, it was. It's over 20 years. And, um, but I was there, but I, I, I've watched um, Renewal. And I can tell you right now, Pastor, that there's a need to share, to express feelings. Worship, we need to rediscover worship because it's become standardized again. Like, you know, mm -hmm. now we all raise our hands. But we need, to, we need to rediscover the personal reality of worship and graduate that into sharing feelings uh, from God to one another, and people are coming together. I'm finding that to be a foundation, in, in not only in the Acts 242 meetings, which you do every other week here in Albuquerque, but in my traveling. I, I travel well, 27 well, Let's talk about states. revival. You know, the, the word revival in Christian circles and mm -hmm. religious circles mm -hmm. is one that's, that's thrown about. You'll hear people say, we need a revival. For some people, that means that we need to go, and, and I'll, you'll see them say this, we need to go back to what you know, we saw years ago that that is the definition of a revival. Or some people are talking about a revival is a re set of meetings that they go to. Hey, I'm going to a revival, right? Uh, or it's at a location. Well, when you talk about revival, what does that mean to, to Dennis Cole? Revival is not a meeting you go to. Revival is something that happens to you. Okay. You have to want it. I would agree it. with that, certainly. You have to want it. So teachers, uh, you know, uh, facilitators, overseers, we, 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 uh, we want to learn because we have the position to teach. I'm not saying everybody doesn't. As a matter of fact, in our Acts 242 meetings, I'll let everybody teach in, in a limited way. But the key thing is we've got to understand that it's something that we will want to have because we need to have it. For such a time as this, this world is so chaotic, it's so lawless, the new world order is worldwide, there's no country to escape to, and lawlessness are legal laws, and it's discouraging people. But the early church, they had the same problem. But they found freedom because they established a connection. Each one came to this place, this lonely place, to find fellowship with others. Well, you know, one God. of the things that we've heard pastors share throughout the season of the pandemic is the verse that says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Talking about right. the importance of gathering together for fellowship. Now, you mentioned that your revival meetings are centered on fellowship times yes. as well. What, what benefit does that have? Certainly there is scriptural precedence for That's it. That's a great point. But what, what is the benefit? It starts with worship which is prayer, and we do worship. It's very important that we rediscover worship. However, that is not where the revival renewal will end. It has to segue into sharing. See, what has been stolen from worldwide cultures is freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, laws have come and they've, they've ostracized freedom, and we can find it from God. God is giving it generously, but we got to find it in ourselves. And as we find that freedom, what we're doing, we're in effect taking off our masks. And I always say to people, it's not about COVID. It's about the mask that Adam and Eve put on when they cover themselves. It's taking that mask off and becoming organic. It's absolutely, and that's a, that's a kind of functional, very real repentance. And it's, and it's taking it off and we're finding that, do you think, I do love my do, brother. Do you think, Dennis, that revival is something that can be permanent or is it, is it seasonal? I mean, is, do people come into a season of revival uh, or, or is it become a revival that they can live in? Or um, could it be either way, I guess. I guess it could maybe be both of those things. Yes. Well, you got to come to it first. So there's a season of revival. You come to it. Okay. 
However, it can be permanent. And for such a time as this, the world we're living in now, it would be very good if it was permanent. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about that because we're running out of time right now. But how does you know, the second coming of Jesus relate to revival? I mean, there, does, there is a discussion in Scripture about the fact that there will be a, a great falling away, but there's right. also a belief by many that there will be a, a great gathering in. So how do those things intersect? The, the, the key thing that um, we've heard is the falling away because the Bible talks about it. But the consequence of the falling away the opposite consequence of people falling away, wow, there's no one to talk to, I'm isolated, I, I, I don't love God like I used to, or maybe I never loved him at all. The consequence of that, you come to that point, you hear yourself say that enough times, and you realize, I need God, I want God. It's good. And the Bible says, when you see all these things, he's, he's, at, he's right at the door. He's standing at the door of your property. The property is the body you live in, and it's the heart that he's knocking on. Well, I encourage you to find out more about the things that Dennis is involved with, these Acts meetings that are taking place a couple times a month. Information's on the screen. Dennis, thanks for stopping Thank by. Thank you That's very much. Thing. God bless you. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. In between uh, some of the segments today, we've just been talking about the fact that that there's been a lot of equipment issues of late. Uh, even yes. <laughs> even recently, we had a, a problem with a piece that took us off the air for a few minutes. I mean, it wasn't the end of the world, but it was kind of a glitch. And you know, we, we've had some weird stuff like that happen. And but you know and what? I, in TV land, two minutes is that. a long time. Oh my it, goodness! It seems like a long time. And when we have something go blank here in the station, I mean, everyone is on deck and it affects you as well in what you're sure. watching or what you're expecting to see right. at a certain time. So one of the reasons I mentioned that is because when you give to family safe programming and especially to the President's Club, those fifty, seventy-five hundred dollars some people are making donations, larger donations, yes. several hundred dollars, so maybe it's a one-time gift, maybe it's a recurring gift. Those things help us to be able to replace equipment. You know, we, we just this weekend took delivery again yes. of a of a couple thousand dollars worth of gear that was important because we had been doing some interviews in studio and uh, some equipment glitched, got the audio, didn't get the video. You know, you don't want that to happen if you've got guests coming in and sharing with them, whether it's this, this program or if it's another ministry. So your donations really matter, and we really appreciate it as you are being faithful with your giving. And so thankful that as we ordered the equipment you're speaking of, it came in Promptly. pretty quickly and so that's a blessing as well because of the shortage and the delay in equipment we'd invite you to visit our website at kazq32.org to give safely online you can always call into the station as well if you'd like to do that at 505-884-8355 extension 101 it's automated and if you talk to someone that'd be great if you don't please leave a detailed message so we can return your call also if you'd like to just send in a check or money order you can do that to 4501 montgomery boulevard northeast albuquerque new mexico 87109 watch jimmy swagger and the sun life network 24 hours a day on kazq 32.3 To have with me today Mike Derrick, who is the principal and administrator at Evangel Christian Academy. We're going to be talking about education today. Mike, thank you for coming and joining with us. Well, thank you for inviting me today. It's always exciting to be on the show. Yeah, it's always good to catch up on topics of education. We've had the privilege of talking to some folks in different <laughs> arenas, but you are involved in the uh, private arena. Uh, we've, we've talked to folks in public and charter, but today yeah. we're going to talk about private education and Christian schools. And I guess a great place to start uh, for us would be to kind of just know the difference. I mean, I, I know you've been involved in education for a while. How long have you been involved in education? Uh, in Christian education in kindergarten through uh, 12th grade for almost, well, over 20 years. Uh, an adult level will be another 20 years on top of that. So. Wow. I guess it'll be 40 years of, of teaching of some kind. Wow, and, and you, have a, what, you have a master's degree? I have a two master's degree, one in theology and one in education. Okay, mm -hmm. let's, let's just kind of jump into these education topics. And you know, we okay. hear a lot of different things talked about. There's public education, there's charter schools education, and then there's uh, 
private education, kind of give deline delineate for us what's the difference, especially between a charter school and a private school, because many times both of them are smaller. Yes, um, advantage of coming to a smaller private Christian school is uh, the teacher-student ratio is going to be a lot smaller, and so there's going to be a lot more one-on-one -on -one with each student, and you know, and because we are smaller, also we're able to adjust the curriculum to meet the the need of each student. Which in a bigger school, you wouldn't be able to do that. Also. Um, of course, we have a Christian curriculum. Uh, we use two different curriculums, and they're both Christian, so we're putting forth a Christian worldview. Uh, one of the advantages of coming to our school is uh, we have an agreement with uh, Central New Mexico College, and in our high school, we're able to offer dual credits. Um, I have a student that told me the other day that she has 80 credits with CNM. Wow. Wow. Uh, she just graduated from CNM uh, last weekend. Uh, before she even graduated from high school, so that's <laughs> we're very amazing. excited about that. Yes. That, that is amazing. And that's not something that's, you know, talked about all the time, but that's something that is available to students. But you have to get on that early on, you know, as a sophomore or junior in, in high school to make that happen. Now, charter schools are realistically, they're public schools, aren't they? Yes, they are. Uh, and so you're still going to get a secular worldview, whereas you're going to a Christian private school. You're going to get a Christian worldview with good moral values, good Christian ethics, and get a good Christian foundation other than them uh, before they go out into the real world. Is, uh, is Evangel Christian Academy a, a accredited school? Yes, we've been accredited for several years now. We just went through accreditation process in December, so we're good for another five years. And it was quite a process. It was a lot of uh, headache for me. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work. Isn't yes, it, it is a lot of work, it. and I'm still doing a lot of work after the visit, uh, just so we keep on top of everything for the next visit. Let's talk yeah. about teachers because you know teachers are a, a big component in a school, just like students are. Uh, tell us about the teachers at Evangel Christian Academy. I know that there's been a talk all around us about teacher shortages, you know, or do you see longevity with your teachers? Tell us about <coughs> what you're seeing. Um, our teachers are very dedicated to teaching. Uh, they're all solid Christians. They're very active in their church. Um, I have one teacher who has been in a teaching profession for over 40 years. Wow. She has literally time. taught every grade from kindergarten to 12th grade. She's taught in Christian school, uh, public schools. I have another teacher that's been with Evangel since 2000. Uh, she's taught every grade in grade school and even taught high school one year. Uh, has her master's degree as well. Uh, and our other teachers uh, have been with us for a very long time, so they're very uh, dedicated to the work. They go up and over and beyond what's required of them uh, to see that our students get a good education. And they spend time, like the other day I was in with one of the teachers, and he was in there after school tutoring a, te a student in math. And so we see that kind of dedication for our teachers with, you know, lots of experience in teaching. Let's talk for a few minutes about not only the academic side, but the extracurricular. I mean, all of us uh, enjoy some extracurricular activities in our life. What are some of the things that uh, your school provides? Uh, one thing is that we offer a fine arts program, which happens to be through the church. Uh, we had a very large group of students who participated this year. And I'm happy to say that when they had their competition in March, that every one of them qualified to go on to the nationals. Uh, again, I was talking to a student the other day, and this summer will be the seventh time that she's gone to the national oh my uh, competition. So <laughs> reaches yes. into middle school, then I assume. Yes, into okay. middle school as well. She started in sixth grade and, and worked her way up. We also uh, are part of the New Mexico Activities Association, and so we have a, a competitive volleyball program and also basketball for boys and girls. Our girls uh, were district champions again this year. This is back-to-back. Uh, championships for them, and something new we started this year. We started esports. Something what? new. What are esports? Esports is where they're playing computer games. They they oh, get man. out their Nintendo the switches. Thumbs in the West. Huh? Yes, <laughs> they get out their Nintendo switches, and here they are playing another school uh, across the internet. They can any, be anywhere from a 1A to a 3A school. So the wow. competition's pretty stiff. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, who would have thought that uh, esports would make their way? I guess you could probably letter in esports anymore. Yes, she can. We we gave uh, five people letters this year, varsity letters for esports. Well, there you go. You know, it's, yes. it's a new day, friends. It's not just a matter of getting out on the field or 
the baseball diamond or the basketball court, <laughs> uh, tennis court. Now you can can sit back and uh, participate uh, in athletics via esports. I think that's kind of uh, an interesting thought. Yes. Uh, I, your fine arts program does that encompass music items as uh, well? Music, uh, drama, uh, speech. Uh, we had some students that qualified nationals in preaching this year. Hmm. Uh, one of them has been, I think, the third time that she's qualified. Uh, the other one was the very first time and made it to nationals as a freshman, which we were excited about as well. And lots of drama. Some of them wrote their own plays and performed them, and they did quite well. What are some of the improvements you've been working on as a school, <clears throat> facilities-wise, uh, and in other ways? Uh, as I think about our building, uh, you know, I came in 2000, and I, you know, I think our building's starting to get old, and and so we've been doing a lot of remodeling. We've put in new flooring, put in new LED lights, and a lot of the classrooms. We completely remodeled our library. Uh, and then we're in the process right now putting in brand new windows all the way around uh, in every classroom of the school. Uh, this summer we're going to restucco the building. So when the students come back in the fall, it's going to look like a brand new building when they walk up to the building. And of course, it's going to be fresh inside as well. And it'll just make a better learning environment. It's really exciting to <coughs> see uh, that you know, Christian education is continuing to thrive. Uh, Evangel Christian Academy started when? The school started in 1976, and we've been going ever since then. So, my goodness, that's yeah. uh, 40 plus years. Yeah, 43 uh, years, I believe. Education. So, let's let's do this <coughs> as we come closer to the end. Tell us some success stories. Do you have any uh, stories that you're like, you know, this really encouraged <coughs> me? Because I know you've been with the school for a long time. Yeah, I've been with the school since uh, 2000. And uh, being on Facebook, we've connected with a lot of our alumni. Uh, one of our students is an English teacher in the largest school in Virginia, uh, which is uh, high school, which is very exciting. I have another student that's in upstate New York who's an EMT. I have students now that are in uh, Sandia Labs, working there for a number of years now. We have students who graduated now that are doctors, lawyers, nurses. Uh, one of them just became an author. She teaches at UNM and now is an author, so we're excited about that. Some have become pastors, some have been on the mission field. And so we've seen a lot of success. You know, some have become business owners. And so we're very excited about all the different things that our students have done. Some have been even going into law enforcement or police officers right here in the city. You know, that's a wide <laughs> range. You know, when you think of a, a school having an impact in a community like Evangel Christian Academy has had since 1976, I'm just trying to add in my mind, I think that's 46 years of, of ministry. And I don't even know how many graduates, but hundreds, of hundreds, graduates hundreds of people that are, yeah. that are out there. I, I came in contact with one of the graduates of, of the school last week, and uh, you you'd mentioned that business owners they had just opened a brand new business here in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting. Do you sometimes see uh, students uh, have that have graduated bring their kids back to yes, the um, academy? Yes, I was away for a couple of years and came back, and the first thing I noticed when I walked in. There were parents that I taught in eighth grade, which made me feel a little old. <laughs> uh, and here they are bringing their kids uh, to our school. And so that's quite exciting going on to the next generation. You know, we left an impact on the parents and now we're impacting their kids. Is enrollment underway? Yes, we're on open enrollment right now. If you want a tour, uh, please call us at 505-883-4674 and we can make an appointment for a tour. All right, and I know there's information on the screen regarding the website and different contact points throughout our time together. Mike Derrick from Evangel Christian Academy, the principal and administrator, thank you for being with us. Thank you. I have been in 1st and 2nd Samuel in our personal devotions and we were reading along in the 2nd Samuel chapter 5 recently and it talks about David now becoming the king mm -hmm. and he has defeated the house of Saul with uh, the civil war that has happened at the beginning of the chapter it talks about the fact that they fight against the Jebusites in Jerusalem and you get down to around verse number uh, 8 or so and it talks about the fact that they overcome that mm -hmm. city and David sets up Jerusalem uh, as his capital. 
Get to verse 10. That verse stands out to me. Ruth, what does it say? It's just one simple verse. Sure. It says, and David became more and more powerful because the Lord of heaven's armies was with him. Isn't that interesting? You know, how come David became more powerful? It was because God was with him. Scripture puts it this way in another place. It says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen watch in vain. If, if you're seeing success in your life, understand that it's the favor of God resting upon you. If you're struggling in your life, it's always good to ask, am I doing things God's way or am I trying to fight against God? You know, people do fight against God uh, and, and they find life to be hard. You know, it wasn't Jesus who speaks to Saul mm -hmm. along the Damascus road and says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Why are you kicking against the pricks? Why, why, why are you why going? Why fighting me? Yeah. I get, yeah, why are you fighting me? Mm -hmm. it, it's just a good reminder to us that the favor of God brings blessing into our lives. And makes your life, it, it makes things go a little more smoothly. You might not, you will still encounter difficulties and trials, but when the Lord is with you, it makes it a lot easier. And you have that peace of God that passes all understanding that accompanies his presence when you know that you're doing the right thing and you're walking in obedience and doing things his way, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding is with you. And so I really, I like that part of it because then you know for myself, when I have the peace of God resting on me, I know that I'm walking. Although my mind and maybe things on the outside look a little different uh, or are coming against me, the peace of God surpasses all of that. So that's one of the ways I know. We'd encourage you to read through the book of 2 Samuel and ask the Lord to show you His truths in it. Thank you for being with us today on Spectrum. God bless you.